Hello, everybody. Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. The link is right there. Check it out. Everything you want to know about me, all my ministries, all my campaigns, all my websites, all the URLs we talk about, all there. <clears throat> all right, so... All right, so my brothers and sisters in Christ, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about, how should I describe this? There's an awful lot of people on social media, I guess especially Facebook, but it, it transcends all social media, Twitter, I'm not on LinkedIn that much, Instagram, uh, and and YouTube, I guess, uh, who think they have theology degrees, who think because they follow this person or that person or they uh, agree with this perspective or that perspective put forth by people who think they are theologians, uh, uh, that they have theology degrees, that they're theologians. And, And what they really reveal about themselves is their lack of humility, right, their abject pridefulness, while they exude ignorance. And they have the audacity to preach and teach. They think they're know-it-alls. I call it holiest than thou, but know-it-alls. It really is a bit mind-boggling. I'm going to give you a couple of examples today. And while I find my place here, Let's uh, do some opening prayers. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin us souls. Amen. Uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Mother God, pray for us, o, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thy intercession was left unaided inspired with this confidence we fly into thee o virgin of virgins our mother to you we come before you we stand sinful and sorrowful o mother the word incarnate despise not our petitions but in thy clemency hear and answer us amen All right, so my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, some opening prayers, and uh, let's get to uh, some things here. And I, I want to, I'm just going to give you uh, an example. All right, so uh, I'm going to give you an example based on one post, okay? So I, I posted asking for myself, when I give a blessing at the end of Mass, am I supposed to ask if everyone there is in the state of grace? If I've done a good job pastorally and there are a lot of sinners in the church who still can't receive communion but attend Mass, do I not give the final blessing at the end of Mass because uh, I know they are receiving the blessing? 
And of course not. This is a rhetorical question, right? Absolutely, it's a rhetorical question. It's a question to get you to think, all right? Okay. All right, so somebody says, Father, you should always give a blessing. It's a charitable thing to do for the flock, okay? Well, yes, for the, for the general blessing at the end of Mass, yes, all right? But th this person, all right, is telling me what I should do. I, I told her, I said, I know the answer, okay? You only have a short time here on earth. Bless your heart out while you still have the chance. No, I, I can't give blessings to everyone any time. Yes, blessings are always needed and good, especially in this communal setting when the blessing is requested for specific individuals in a very public, celebrated way. This is when they believe a priest needs to counsel and advise on church teachings. This as is done to any couple living not in a state of grace. Right, so you need to take uh, every situation individually. All right. Uh, this is a wonderful question. A saintly priest might suggest certain sins that are immortal. In the, okay, right? You know, again, it, it's just, see, everybody thinks they have a theology degree, right? If a same-sex couple specifically asked me to bless them together or bless their relationship, I would pray over them without a blessing, okay? All right, so that's what I, I gave another example there, Okay. All right, so now this woman says, all right, you would explain that you couldn't give them a blessing? Would you explain that you were only praying over them? Does it not elicit scandal for the people to see a priest specifically praying over a relationship? And that, so she's questioning me. This woman is questioning me, right? Right? So, you know, she, so this woman has never given a blessing in her life because she's not allowed to give blessings, right? Lay pre people cannot, there's, there, and, and right away, no, Father, we, we can bless, fathers can bless their family and everything. And look at, there's nothing about blessings, priestly blessings, diaconate blessings, lay blessings, that I don't know, right? So get that right into your head right now. There, there's not, okay? And, and if there is, all right, I've yet to read it from any of you who have a social media theology degree, okay? And and if I did, I I would I would have to give the diocese their money back for sending me to the seminary because I didn't do my job in the seminary, okay? Okay? All right. All right. So All right. So this is unbelievable. Egg, exactly. I am giving different examples. All right. So again, these these are arrogant people. This this these answers are born out of arrogance. Okay. All right. All right. Th these answers are born out of arrogance. It's it's really unbelievable. This is such a telling threat, okay? All right? So I answer this woman, this arrogant woman, all right, with her answer, okay? Okay, so would it be more appropriate to bless them individually? No, I want to evangelize to them. This is not analogous to public blessing at the end of Holy Mass. No, I want to give different examples on my page, Joseph. Duh! All right, Father Imbrato, I would think that praying over them together is a sanctioning of their marriage. That's pushing it a little, my trad rat opinion. Which is wrong because I said I wouldn't bless them. Uh, it, it, see, these people are arrogant. Uh, the the 
I am sorry, folks, but the arrogance and the ignorance of many on this page proves my point. There is no such thing as social media theology degrees. You know, it, it is unbelievable. It, it really is unbelievable. I want to get to the one. There's one that's just, it really is unbelievable. I, I, this is so mad. I can't even go through this. It's so maddening. It's it's crazy. All right. I hear you, but I'm confused about something you wrote above about non-cohabitating couple. Are you differentiating between fornication and same-sex relationships? Unless I read it wrong, you would bless one couple but not the other. I, I haven't finished reading the whole thread, just sorting through it. All right. Okay. All right. So. Let, let, let's talk about it. I have gone into abortion facilities, into waiting rooms, into waiting rooms of abortion facilities where I got these people and they're all there about to kill their child. And I'll put my hands over them and say, Father in heaven, in the name of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, I ask that you send the Holy Spirit down upon the people in this room. Give them the wisdom and the strength and the diligence, the grace and the humility not to give their child up to this abortionist for sacrifice. Turn them away from this place, Lord. Fill their heart with your love. Allow them to realize that this is a little boy or a little girl in their womb. Father, give them wisdom. Give them strength to turn away from this place, to do away with this sin, to immerse themselves in your mercy. Bring repentance upon them, Lord. Allow me the strength to give them the help that they need to extend mercy to them. And I ask for all of this, all of your grace, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, what did I just do? I just prayed over all the sinful people in this room, in that room, right? All of them. None of them are in a state of grace. Most of them probably in a state of mortal sin, right? Ongoing mortal sin, most of them, okay? And the blessing that I gave was what? I asked our Lord to bless my prayer. Now, anyone who hears that prayer, are they going to say, Father, you're committing scandal? That was scandalous, Father? Well, there's people who say, Father, the fact that you're in a waiting room of an abortion facility, all right, uh, 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 is a scandal in and of itself, right? Well, you're a fool, okay? Uh, and that's a, that's a topic for another time, all right? But so let's, say, uh, let's say, again, and one of the examples I use is uh, a boyfriend and girlfriend come up to me after Mass, all right? And they ask for a blessing. Will you bless us? Will you bless us? Will you bless our relationship, our friendship, our relationship, whatever? And I know that they have been fornicating because I've heard both their confessions, all right? Now, I can't say anything about it. I'm not going to say anything about it, all right? But I know by the nature of their confession that they are trying to be chaste. And they want me to bless their relationship, all right? So I give them a blessing. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Am I blessing sin? By no means. I'm blessing what they're trying to do to attain chastity. Okay, now, a homosexual couple comes up 
two guys or two women. Father, will you bless our relationship? And I put my hands out and I said, Father in heaven, in the name of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit down upon our couple. Lord, and give them wisdom, give them grace, give them the strength to do your will. Always, Lord, show us your will and give us the strength to do your will, Lord. Always, Lord, show us how you call us to chastity in our lives, that we all may be chaste, that in being chaste, live virtuous lives. And Lord, I ask these graces to be bestowed on this couple. And I ask for all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have I blessed their sin? Anyone who heard that prayer? Anyone had heard that prayer? Why would they be scandalized by that prayer? See, you know, you people do not know what you're talking about. You think you know, and I'm not talking about all of you. I'm talking about these people, all right, who are who, who are going to instruct me on praying over people and blessings, right? I mean, it is just absolutely mind-boggling. Let me see if I can find uh, another example here. So this, this bishop says false equivalence because the laity have a false understanding of the word blessing. So I gave them here and elsewhere many questions to shed light on their false understanding. Here's an exhaustive and now excellent. Okay, so I'm pushing, all right, this, this uh, faith and reason, this Michael Lofton's video, an hour and 44 minutes, all right? Uh, Yes, there is a big difference. Somebody said, I have no business knowing whether they're immortal sin or not. Okay. Okay. So now a very dear friend of mine, very dear friend of mine, all right, said, I can't imagine John the Baptist praying over anyone who's living in a deliberate mortal sin. He would tell them, repent. Mortal sins cut the person off from God. No amount of prayer from a priest or anyone else will repair that rift. Only the person's repentance will do that. All right. And so my answer is, isn't telling them to repent a prayer? I have often prayed over people calling them to repent and seek a virtuous life. And then I pray, when I pray such a prayer... And I end with, and I ask this, Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, have I blessed them or asked God to bless my prayer? I have held my hands over an entire abortion facility. I just gave you that, okay? I've done minor exorcisms where there's numerous blessings, right? See, this is an area where the lady have a narrow mindset and actually in ignorance about blessings and praying over people. There's never been a moment in my ordained life where I didn't know what and how to pray in a particular situation in regards to someone else. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace you have given me. Okay, now here's Mr. Pomposity, okay? Here's Mr. Arrogance. Hi, Father. A person does not have to be in the state of grace to receive a blessing, but the blessing has to be ordered to what is properly blessed. This means that you can bless a person, even one not currently in a state of grace, but you could not bless the relationship of a same-sex couple. Here's an example of why this is. I could bring, right, and he goes through it. So he's preaching to me. He's teaching me, right? I mean, he's got, a, he's got a grasp of the obvious. He absolutely does, right? In the same way, people can be blessed, but sin and disorder relationships cannot be, all right? Um, you know, it's just uh, unbelievable, all right? And somebody else says, preach. And then I say, are you, pre are you teaching me? Are you a priest ever giving a priestly blessing? How presuming you are, right? Father, I'm confused by your response. You asked the question. The question was rhetorical. The question was rhetorical for self-reflection. You really thought I don't know the 
answers to these blessing questions. I mean, this is unbelievable, right? It, it's See, even him asking me this, right? Okay? All right? It, it's just unbelievable. So, again, this issue of, look, it, I don't care who you are. Unless you have a theology degree, you don't have a theology degree. I don't care. There, there's a meme out there that talks about don't, don't, uh, uh, don't confuse your Google searches with my theology degree. Now, I'm not saying that my theology degree is all that. And I'll give you another example. This guy, Michael Lofton, Michael Lofton, uh, reason and theology, reason and theology, I think. All right. Reason and theology, I think. Right. And I'm assuming he has a theology degree. I think he does. All right. Listening to him. Far more read and knowledgeable about theological. Well, there's nothing he doesn't know that I don't. I mean, there's nothing that he knows that I don't know. However, what he knows a lot more of is off the top of his head, right? References, documents, encyclicals, apostolic letters, right? I mean, this guy has the references in line, the documentation. I can tell how well read he is. So from that standpoint, he's far more knowledgeable than I am or from a theological standpoint, okay? Uh, I will tell you that I will never, ever, ever tell you anything that's theologically wrong, okay? And if you question me on, well, where can I find that, Father? I might tell you, well... Uh, 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 check out the catechism, right? If I know it's in a particular encyclical, I might, but my breadth and depth of knowledge is off the top of my head of encyclicals, all right, is, is, is really, it's fundamental. It's not by any means exhaustive. It's not by any means deep or broad, all right? So I really respect that. So Michael Lofton did this our 44 minute video on the dubia the same day all of this hit right so there's been two dubias three actually if you count 2016 three dubias the first one wasn't answered the second one was answered was presented privately answered privately the second one then was presented privately all right and then with limited answers and then made public and then uh, the, the Vatican publicized the entire answers to the, to the second dubia in July, right? And, and Michael, Michael, I, I mean, spent hours, I'm sure, putting together for, for your sake and my sake. And I told him, I said, thank you. I would never have had the time to do what he did. What a blessing it is. And so... Um, you know, so here's a lay person who has a theology degree who works day in and day out building, developing that theology degree. That's not what's happening on social media. That's not what's happening on Facebook. These people just don't know. All right. They just don't know. All right. Uh, thank you for your apology. I apologize for my lack of charity. All right. So I just apologize to this guy because he apologized to me. Okay? That's the way it should be. Right? Somebody apologizes, it's over. Right? You guys understand that too, right? If somebody apologized to you, Unless there's but, but, you know, people say, well, I'm sorry, Father, but, 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 and then they make the case for the fact that they're not really sorry that you're still wrong, right? But if somebody says, I'm sorry, Father, I, I really didn't mean to come across that way, it's over. It's over. And so he apologized, and I apologize for being uncharitable, okay? Plain and simple, all right? And that's, that's the way it should be. But I will tell you, all right, 
Uh, I will tell you, all right, that indeed, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there's far too many people, and if this pertains to you, if the shoe fits it, wear it, all right? Um, uh, you, there's no such thing as a social media or Facebook theology degree, okay? No such thing, all right? All right? That's it, all right? That's it, all right? There's no substitute, all right? To take a year of, the, of philosophy, then to take Thomistic Aristilian theology, you learn how to think, you learn how to deduce. I mean, I don't spend much time reading church documents, but I've read every document of the Second Vatican Council. I've read every encyclical of St. John Paul II, I think. I have not read all of theology on the body. That is exhaustive. All right. Um, I have read Laudato Si. I have read Amoris Laetitia. Um, and, and I, and I read and I follow people like my, know who you can trust because Catholicism is the most rational, the most reasonable, uh, set of principles, right? On the face of the earth. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be of God. It wouldn't be of the Holy Spirit. So when you're listening to somebody, someone like me, who professes to be middle of the road between excess and defect, and Michael actually brought that out, right, that he's lost a lot of followers because he's been critical of the trad rads and he's been critical of, of course, the, the heretics, right? Although, again, you can be in excess, you can be in defect. The trad rads are in excess, all right? They are um, off the reservation. And then, of course, the heretics, the liberals, uh, they're uh, off the reservation in the other direction, right? Um, um, but he's pointed out, all right, this rich middle way between excess and defect. That's where virtue is found. That's where moderation is found. You know, I've been talking about this uh, lately a lot, all right, a lot. And so when I listen to somebody like him, I say to myself, yes, yes, everything he says is reasonable. When I listen to somebody like Taylor Marshall and I start shaking my head because it's an endless drone, Taylor Marshall, Anthony Stein, it's an endless drone of criticism of the Pope. Now you might say, oh, well, Michael Lawton is a Pope splainer. Pope splainer. That's what I, one guy criticized him for being a, a Pope splainer. Well, he is a Pope splainer. I just would not. I just would not connotate it in a negative, connote it in a, in a connotated, connote it in a negative way, right? Matter of fact, in this hour and 45 minute video, on several occasions he said, and he reiterated over and over again, I wish the Holy Father um, uh, was uh, a clearer in this situation. He could have done a better job in this situation. And that's what I've said. I mean, sometimes he's confusing. Sometimes he, he doesn't do enough to clarify things. But in this particular case, posting the responses to this dubia, as uh, 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 Michael Lofton said, he was Johnny on the spot. Johnny on the spot. Well, I told uh, Michael he was Johnny on the spot for the research that he did in getting that video out right away. So, Michael Lofton, thank you very much. For the rest of you, for the rest of you, you do well to listen to people like Michael Lofton. If you're listening to John Henry Weston, if you're listening to Taylor Marshall, if you're listening to other people that have just gone off the abyss in the one direction, stop it, stop it, all right? And again, you guys know that I am not this... Uh, uh, unequivocal defender of the Pope. I have many, many problems with the Pope. I have problems with the Pope in terms of uh, the uh, uh, worldwide pandemic and his handling of the pandemic and the remedy to the pandemic and some of the things that he said about that. I made a point on social media today to those of you, because I know a couple of staunch defenders of the Pope. In their mind, the Pope can do no wrong. All right, at least based on what I can see, I've never seen them criticize the Pope. Yet, they are staunch, staunch critics of, of, of the remedy to the worldwide pandemic, right? All right, the whole remedy to the worldwide pandemic, you name it, about the worldwide pandemic, they agree 100% with me, right, with me. Well, if you agree with me on the worldwide pandemic and all its remedies, then you don't agree with the Pope in terms of his viewpoint 
of the worldwide pandemic and its remedies. All right, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. All right? All right. Very good. I love you guys. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Let's see how far into this we are. All right, all the angels and saints. Uh, to talk to him ahead of time. Have him call me. Uh, all right, so, uh, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, All right. So anyway, uh, so anyway, th this person here. OK, let me give you another one. No, it's none of the priest business to know if a person is the state of grace. You imagine somebody saying that. No, it's none of the priest business to know if a person is in the state of grace. That is between God and the person. People are struggling as it is to stay practicing Catholics and even to enter a church building because they feel bad for all their sins. So many denominations, blah, blah, blah. If they're my parishioners, it's a, this is my response. If they're my parishioners, it's absolutely my business to know if they're in a state of grace because it's my job to help them bring to repentance and return to grace. See, th these people, they they think they 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 got it figured out right yeah it is it is it is an arrogance immersed in ignorance that's it is to be ignorant and to somehow think you still have the answers is arrogance all right so that's it so there's nothing worse than being ignorant well there's only one thing worse than being ignorant and that's being arrogant in your ignorance okay all right. I love you guys. Really, do your daily offering today. Oh, wait a minute. I was going to see how far in we are. We're over 30 minutes. I'm wrapping this up. And we are. All right. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Check out Michael Lofton's um, YouTube channel. I am telling you, check out his YouTube channel. He is excellent reasonable they say reason in theology he is well uh versed in theology and very reasonable you can't be one without the other okay hey again i love you pray for me i'll pray for you go out into the world today my friends give them heaven protestchildkilling.com protestchildkilling.com is my website all of your intentions i see them boy i can't i can't pronounce your name but I'll pray for your son in Kansas, okay? All right, very good. Always be assured of my prayers for all of you. I pray every single Mass, every single day for all of you. Let's go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.